sure make that harmonica sing, John. I ought to be able to. I've been blowing through her for 40 years. My pappy gave me my first one. <laughs> he said it'd keep me from chawing the back of Guess nobody can be right about everything. Nah, I guess not. Say, we ought to be getting back to the fort by supper, don't you think? Time to spare. <laughs> guess you're kind of anxious to get back to your wife and son of yours, ain't uh, you? I hope to shout I am. That's the first time I've been away from this long. You know, I'll bet that boy of mine, I'll bet he's grown a foot just since I've been gone. Oh, young ones do grow quick, but I don't think you're going to notice much difference in a week and a half. Let's stop up there at Wheaton Lake to fill up the canteen. Boy of mine, he's only four years old. He already knows what he wants to be when he grows up. Uh, let me guess. A soldier. That's right. That's right. Well, don't you be too disappointed if he changes his mind. All six of my boys did. Well, it won't hurt to encourage him a little bit. Hey, look what I got him when I was down in Clinton. <laughs> he ought to get a kick out of that. I didn't want to get a sergeant, uh, but they didn't have anything else. Very funny. As a matter of fact, I got the sergeant on purpose. have something to do. Well, then go find something to do. Now go on, get. Charlie, run down to the general store and get me some more nails, will you? I don't want this thing to collapse in the middle of the ceremonies. Well, it might have got you work, right, Clem? Oh, hi, Ben. What do you think? I think you took long enough to get it done. Well, this treaty signing's been postponed so many times that we wanted to make sure it was definite before we got everything ready. Well, just make sure it's done by 2 o'clock. I just don't think the Paiute chiefs and army generals are going to feel like waiting around while you nail on those finishing touches. <laughs> well, it's not even yet noon. I got more than enough time. Hey, man! How are you, Clem? Oh, I'm fine, Sam. Where's Jamie? Oh, he'll be here, don't worry. Awesome Joe will bring him in. He's going to help me with my picture taking. I know, I know. That's all I've been hearing for the past week. He's a full-fledged newspaper man now. <laughs> well, he could do a lot worse. <laughs> I thought you were gonna ride out and escort Winnemucca and the other chiefs into town. Yeah, I am. As a matter of fact, I better get going. Ben, do you think this treaty will do any good? That all depends, Sam. 
On what? And whether we break this one, just as we've broken every other one. There's a lot of expensive equipment in there. You two better bring it in. All right, Tchotchkes. Room 17. Top of the stairs, turn right, and all the way back. May I help you, sir? Yes, I have a reservation. My name is Gans, St. Louis Daily Record. Oh, Mr. Gans! Why? You are a party of three. That's right. Just sign here, sir. We have a beautiful suite for you. I requested a room overlooking the street. And that's exactly what you have. You'll be able to take some excellent pictures from your room. That'll be fine. Thank you. Now, room three, top of the stairs, turn left. And Mr. Gans, when you take those pictures, where would be a good place for me to stand? I mean, so as I'd be sure to be in the picture. Oh, well, if you're anywhere out there near that platform, we'll be sure to get you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Stop smiling. I already took the picture. Oh, yeah? Hey, how'd it look? I, I wanna... Through there, you looked upside down, but I think you like it. Now, if you don't mind, Jamie and I have got some work to do. Yeah. OK, Jamie, let's get everything packed up and ready to move. Yes, sir. Uh, Sam, you, uh, you wouldn't want to take another one just to be sure, huh? Oh, I'm sure. Now, would you mind running along? Let us finish your work. Yeah, I, I don't want to get in your way now. You fellas, go right ahead with your business. What do you want? Sam, when you when you make it, will you make a great big one? Oh, there'd be no way to make a small picture of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see you, fellas. cameras and go down the street, see what you can find out. You know, I think that we ought to stay up here out of sight. How much am I paying you, Mr. Graham? $5,000. $5,000 for a few days' work? It took me 10 years to save all that money, 10 years. I think it entitles me to give the orders. I'm not complaining about the money. Well, then shut up! You let me do the thing! Well, all right. 
good. Now, while Hunter's checking the street, you go down to the livery stable and hire a rig. Take it around back of the hotel and tie it up. Oh. You take those down to the kids. It'll make them real happy. Will do. And remember, if anyone asks your newspaperman, be back in half an hour. You take all you want now, boys, so as you don't run out. Thanks, mister. Now you can shoot off all you want. Just make sure you save some for the celebration. We will. <laughs> Chester, stand there looking at yourself in that mirror all day. I ain't gonna play. You just give me a minute here. You know, if you if you put a feather in that hat, everybody would notice you. Look, it ain't every day I get a chance to have my picture in the paper. I don't want to disappoint you, but Sam's already took my picture. <laughs> oh, I'm not talking about this little local paper. I'm talking about them big eastern papers. I hear the town's full of reporters from Denver, even St. Louis. Yeah? Yeah. I ain't seen none of them. Well, maybe that's because they haven't seen you. Take care of that, Clem. You kids, get away from here now. Go on, get. Those boys are sure having a good time. Yeah, well, they ought to be locked up. That'd cool them off. <laughs> Can I quote you on that? Quote me? On what? Not on what you said about the kids. They ought to be locked up. Well, my name's Hunter. St. Louis Daily Record. The record? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> no, you know I was just fooling. I love young'uns like they was my very own. Let's face it, we were all young once. And so we were. You uh, getting any good pictures? Oh, yes, uh, yes, quite a few. Uh, I'd like to take one of you if I could. Well, I'm not much for picture taking, but uh, I guess news is news. Where do you want me to stand? How about right over here? Uh, yeah, that's good. Now just hold on for a second while I set the camera up. You did want a picture of me by myself? Yes, indeed. Just you. That's what I thought. Now just hold still while I focus. Will the uh, ceremony go off on schedule? You bet it will. It's no easy job keeping everything running smooth, but that's what I'm paid for. Well, they're going to sign the treaty right out there in the street, I understand. That's right, unless it rains, but there ain't a cloud in the sky. You be sure and let me know when you're going to take that picture. Well, we're ready right now. Hold it. All right. That's it. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Anytime. You sure that's a good one? Oh, great shot. Great shot. Uh, Mr. Hunter, that's Clem. Clem Foster. F-O-S-T-E-R. Thanks, Clem. Right. I'll see you later. Clem? Clem, I'd like to speak to you for a moment. Yes, Miss Crothers? Uh, was that a reporter you were speaking to? 
Mm-hmm. All the way from St. Louis. Well... <clears throat> well, as president of the Virginia City Ladies Club, I think it only proper that I should be seated on the platform during the ceremonies. Yes, Mrs. Crothers, well, I... Now, we ladies have done our best to help these Indians. We've given them used clothing and food. We've even tried to teach them our language. I think they would have appreciated it more if you'd have tried to learn theirs. What? Never mind. I'll do my best, Mrs. Crothers, but I'm kind of busy right now. Good day. Learn fear language? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Sorry. Look, I told you who I am and I'll pay top dollar. I've got to have me a rig. And I told you, mister, I can't rent you a rig if I ain't got one to rent. What about this one? Ain't mine. Fine, I'll rent it from whoever owns it. I only need it about an hour and I'm gonna make it worth his while. It belongs to the Cartwrights and they don't exactly need the money. Maybe they'll uh, rent it to me as a favor, huh? I told you, I've got to get out there and talk to General Thomas before he gets to town. Now, my paper's gonna fire me if I don't. I suppose I could go ask him. Would you please? You keep an eye on things. I'll be back. Thank you.
doing, son? Well, answer me, boy. Miss... Mr. Loomis, uh, the manager, he, he, he told me to bring you up some champagne. I, I wasn't doing nothing wrong. What's your name? Uh, Teddy Dawes. Well, Teddy Dawes, do you know how to open a bottle of champagne? Yes, sir. Well, you better get to opening it, boy. Yes, sir. How old are you, Teddy? I'm nine, sir. Pretty young to be working. What about school? Well, I had to quit after Pa died. Ma just couldn't make do on her sewing money. How many hours do you work? Oh, usually from about eight to six. Sometimes women are real busy, ten even. Mr. Loomis is letting me off early today, so as I can watch the treaty signing. There. Here you are, sir. You're a fine boy, Teddy. Thank you, sir. I'd better be going out. And Teddy, how would you like to earn yourself five dollars? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. I want you to go into that restaurant across the street. You mean Miss Pickens' place? That's right. I want you to go there and reserve a table for me. That's all? After all them ceremonies are over, I want to make sure I got a table. Mm, that doesn't seem like it's worth five dollars. It sure is to me. There you are. That's a five dollar gold piece. Now you make sure that you stay inside that restaurant and watch that table. You bet I will. Okay, off you go now. Go on. I hate to disturb you, but the uh, fellow wants to borrow your rig. Uh, I can't. We need it. Well, he's a newspaper man. He uh, says he needs it so he can get a story. Says you'll have it back in an hour. Says you'll lose his job if you don't get the story. All right. You tell him he can have it. Make sure he has it back in an hour. Yeah, sure thing. Well, nice to meet you, ma'am. One o'clock. I think we better get everything set up over to the platform. Whatever you say. How do you like the newspaper business so far, Jamie? Oh, I like it just fine. <laughs> if you're going to write a story about this treaty signing today, what'd you write about? Gee, I don't know. Well, you must think something about it. Well, yeah, I guess so. Well, what is it, then? Well, I just think the white folks are patting themselves on the back an awful lot for giving the Indians back a little bit of land that they used to own in the first place. I think you're going to make a good newspaper man. Come on. I swear, that boy of yours is growing like a weed. Yeah, he sure is. Looks like it's going to be a pretty good uh, turnout. Yeah, looks like. 
Now, I'm surprised to see you here. I figured you'd seen enough of Indians for a while. Oh, I wanted my boy to see it. This piece is for him. He won't have to grow up and do any killing. But... Amen to that. Well, we'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Fred's a good man. He lost that arm at Tracy Pass. Good. Thank you very much, Mr. Lang. Got to get this set up? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Sam Dawson, Virginia City Star. The Hunter, St. Louis Daily Record. That is a beautiful piece of equipment. Yeah. Uh, may I... Uh... Oh, sure, sure. Come on. Yeah. Take a look. I envy you. Well, nothing but the best when you work on the record. I got one shot of the courthouse, and I'm through till the signing ceremony. There it is. It was a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Um... Dawson. Dawson. Right. Good day, sir. All set, Mr. Dawson. And Mr. Dawson, the camera's all ready. You know that fellow I was just talking to? He said he was a photographer from a big St. Louis paper. Oh, yeah. He came all the way out here just to get pictures. That's what he said he's doing, but I find that kind of hard to believe. How come? Because it's tough to get pictures when you don't have film in the camera. No film? That's right. Boy, I've only been a newspaper man for one day, and I know better than that. I'm sure you do. Now, he may be a lot of things, but he sure doesn't act like he worked for a newspaper. What would he be pretending for? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. You stay here and watch the camera. I'm going to have a talk with our reporter friend from St. Louis. All right, but don't be too long. It's less than an hour to the ceremony. Don't worry. I wouldn't miss this for anything in the world. Get those kids. Hey, you kids, get out. Go on, get. Dawson. I'm from the local paper. Oh, Mr. Hunter, I hate to bother you like this, but it's a rare thing to have a man of your caliber in our town. I was just dying to ask you a few more questions. Well, we're kind of busy right now, Mr. Well, Dawson. Nonsense, Mr. Hunter. My name is Gans. I'm also with the Daily Record. How do you do? Why don't you come in? Thank you. Well, it's quite an exciting day for Virginia City. It certainly is. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Care for Brandy? No, no, thank you. I, I'm not a Quaker. I just have a bad liver. Well, now, Mr. D Dawson, what questions would you like answered? Well, I'm interested in your camera. What kind of film do you use? Oh, we just use whatever the newspaper sends us. That's very interesting. Why is that? Well, the newspaper must have forgot to send you any film. Mr. Hunter there was taking pictures on the street, and he didn't have any film in the camera. Well, Mr. Hunter, it appears as if your cover didn't fool everyone. You're quite right, Mr. Dawson. The camera was empty. And we do not work for a newspaper. However, before I go on, I must ask you to make me a promise. I want you to swear that what I'm about to reveal to you will remain an absolute secret until after the treaty's signed. Will you do that? If I think it's important and there's a reason. That's fair enough. Actually, Mr. Hunter and myself work for the territorial government. We were assigned to look out for trouble during the treaty ceremonies. We thought our guys as newspaper men was quite clever. I guess I'd make a pretty bad photographer. But you can see the need for absolute secrecy. Well, yeah, but what kind of trouble are you worried about? There are men who would rather not see peace between the Indian and the white man. Hard to believe but true. 
And they all have different reasons, but it amounts to the same thing. Now, I must know. Can I trust you to keep your silence? Oh, yes, of course. You know, I think I'm going to help myself to that drink. You know, I've been in this business quite a while. You pick up an eye for a story. I knew something was up, but I, I had no idea there was anything... I reckon that'd be that three-foot-high bad man you got out there. Tad burn kid. It's all your fault, you know. How come my fault? Well, you was out there shooting off all them fireworks the 4th. Well, that's different. That's the 4th of July, Hoss. Well, it's sort of hard to explain to them little fellers that it's all right to do it on the 4th. It ain't all right to do it on the 5th. Yeah. Check. Right. Oh, you sure learned to play this game pretty quick. Yeah, I was practicing while you was trying on hats. It's <laughs> very funny. Yeah. Another game? No, thanks. I think I'll quit with her. Yeah, well, I gotta shave. Hey, you, uh, you already shaved once today. Well, I'm gonna shave again, all right? Yeah, yeah, don't get angry. I think I'll go out and see how Jamie's getting along. Sure good thing them fancy high fruit and reporters don't show up every day in down. You'd have cut your throat years ago. <laughs> Dead burn, kids. Hey. What you doing? Oh, hi, Hassa. Just waiting. Yeah? Where's Sam? Oh, he went over to the hotel to check on some reporters from St. Louis. Check on them about what? Well, he doesn't think they're really reporters. Yeah? You better get back pretty quick or he's gonna miss the whole ceremony. Yeah, he'll be back. He probably got over and found out they were real reporters. Now he's probably telling them how to run them big newspapers. <laughs> Hey, Hoss, I gotta watch this stuff. Do me a favor and run over and tell him it's almost time. Oh, Jamie, you'll be back. But you just said it yourself. I mean, you know the way he is when he starts talking. Yeah. And besides, they might want to take a picture of you. Yeah? You never can tell. Well, I was, I was going over there anyhow, so I'll just drop by and talk. Oh, thanks, Hoss. do for you. You got some big important newspaper men here, huh? Sure do. All the way from St. Louis. Yeah. Is Sam Dawson with them? I think so. He went up about an hour ago and I haven't seen him come down. Yeah. I got an idea they want to get a picture of me. What room are they in? Room three, top of the stairs and to the left. Thanks, Charlie. Sam Dawson. He's not here. Oh. Well, the clerk said he was up here. Well, he was, but he left ten minutes ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't disturb you. Hey. Put your other hand up on that door. All right, you want it going so bad, go ahead. It's just all about anyhow. Shut up in the room. Hunter, what was that noise? Don't man kick the table over. He won't be moving for a while. Anyone else in the hall? No, it's empty. What took you so long? Well, I had a tough time getting that rig. I got it, though. It's out back. Sam. So you're a friend of this nosy old man, eh? Well, you should have learned to be more careful about who you pick for friends. He's got you in a lot of trouble. I don't know what this is all about, but there's a lot of folks that know where I'm at, and they're going to be wondering about me. Well, you don't need to worry about it. You won't be here long. 
A big friend wants to know what this is all about. Hunter, show him. Magnificent weapon, isn't it? It fires 600 rounds a minute. Invented by a farmer named Gatling. Made all kinds of farm machinery. Then he did something worthwhile. He made this. At two o'clock, I'm gonna use it to kill everyone in that street out there. your reasons are, but it can't be worth killing all them people out there. That's where you're wrong. It is well worth it. This plan isn't the one of a madman, my friend. I've given it a good deal of thought. I can't allow my fellow whites to make this mistake. What mistake? The treaty. The peace treaty. Once it's signed, these heathens will be free to corrupt and destroy us. It's my duty to God, our creator, to stop them from destroying the white race. I see. And you're going to do that by killing a lot of innocent people, both red and white, huh? I don't expect you to understand. You're big as full as those generals out there who came to make the peace. Lives must be lost to save lives. You're out of your mind. On the contrary, I know exactly what I'm doing. I could have killed Winnemuck and the other chiefs back there in the road, but that wouldn't accomplish what I'm after. Once word of this massacre spreads, the Indians will blame the white man, and the whites the Indians, and that will mean war. All-out war until every Paiute is killed. And that's only the beginning. Next comes the Shoshone, and then the Utes, and the Sioux, until the Red Man is wiped off the face of this earth. The Paiutes were responsible for the death of my son, my Johnny. He married a Paiute squaw. It's not easy for a father to kill his only son. Scare Winnemucca off, he ought to be here in a few minutes. I am all set. Where's us? He's out there, Jamie. Well, come on, come on, you look beautiful. Let's go. Come on. Is that a new hat? You bet. It's kind of just right, isn't it? Looks kind of good on you. You like it? Hey, Jamie. Jamie. Oh, hi, Joe. Clem. Hey, Joe, have you seen Haas or Mr. Dawson? How about they were with you? What time is it? That's almost two o'clock. God gone that horse. I told him to go over to the hotel and make sure Mr. Dawson make it in time. What are they doing over there? 
Well, Mr. Dawson went over there to check on some reporters from St. Louis. All right, we got a few minutes left. We'll go get them. All right. Well, oh, thanks, Joe. All right. All right, Graham. Go down, untie the rig, and be ready to go. Now, Clem Foster, you know how much the Indians owe the Ladies' Club. Uh, Mrs. Carruthers, I do know what a wonderful job the Virginia City Ladies' Club is doing, and I, I can assure you I'll do my best to get you up there on that platform for the picture taken. Well, we have done a lot of charitable work where the Indians are concerned. Uh, Mrs. Carruthers, I'll do my best. Well, I'll be standing right for the platform. You won't be able to miss me. <laughs> See you then. Right. Would anybody miss her? You gotta be nice to her. The ladies' club can mean an awful lot of votes for you. Why? They can't vote. No, but I guarantee you they tell their husbands how to vote. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? It's our rig parked back over by the side of the hotel. I loaned it to a guy. To make sure he knows to bring it back to the livery stable. Hey, mister, you, uh, you threw that rig yet? Why? Oh, it's my rig, that's why. Thought you are gonna ride out to see a general or something. Well, yes, I, uh, I did that. If you're all through, then I'll take it back to the stable. Uh, not yet, no. I, uh, I still need it. Like I said, you can have the rig for an hour. It's been a lot longer than that. Now, come on, get down, huh? Don't move. And don't raise your hands. Now, you put that shotgun on the floor of this buggy. Now. Now, we're gonna walk through the back door of that hotel. You're gonna walk ahead of me. Nice and easy. Let's move. St. Louis, what room are they in? You mean the newspaper, man? They happen to be from one of the... Look, what room are they in? Room three! He was gonna kill everybody with it. He's gonna shoot everybody down on the street with it.
It's 205. They're five minutes late. Take more than yelling to wake him up. Yeah. Well, this is one trip I'm glad to see over. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hauling nitro's not my idea of a picnic either. Let's get this stuff in a shack and get moving. Yeah. You, uh, you in kind of a hurry to get home, ain't you? Yeah, kind of. Couldn't be because you got a date with that Sally Morris. No. Yeah, couldn't be. Why? You, uh, you ain't getting sweet on her, are you, Joseph? You're getting awful nosy, aren't you, big brother? Well, ain't that what big brothers are? Well, I suppose you're right. Now, why don't you go wake up Charlie and tell him to give his hand with a sack? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Romeo. <laughs> Got him patched up the best I can, Ben. He's taken quite a blow to the head. He's got a concussion. And there's no way of telling how bad it is. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Doc says you're going to be all right. Darn cat, Doc. The nitro off the shelf. You took quite a whopping there. You trying to blow up the whole world? Oh, well. Who are you? Like. I can't see you. Blind, Doc, but I know you're not deaf now. It's been a month. Is it any better? No, not yet. But I told you this could take time, Joe. Your sight could return next week, next month, maybe even tomorrow. Or maybe never, huh? I'll drop by next week. Okay. All right, all right. Watch it. Watch it. All right. 
Marshal's at the barn. I'll, uh, I'll put a plate for you. Thanks, Cook. Sounds good. Yeah. Eggs on the right, bacon on the left. Sit down and have some breakfast. Oh, I already had breakfast, but I think I will have another cup of coffee. Oh. You had breakfast already. What time is it? Oh, it's about nine o'clock. Don't you have any work to do today? Oh, nothing that won't keep. Yeah, come on, you've been saying that for three weeks now. You and Paul don't have to sit around here looking at me, you know? Joe, I, I was going to take the new buggy out for a ride today. I just wondered if you'd like to come along for the ride. Oh, that's great, Nelson. These two are going to quit working so they can keep an eye on me, and you're going to quit school so you can take me for rides. There is no school today, Joe. It's Saturday. Well, if I want fresh air, I can open my window. Sally Mars came by this morning. I don't want her coming around here. She just wanted to stop by and see you. I mean, she wanted to stop by and look at me. I don't want her here. Uh, Jamie, I, cha I changed my mind. I think I'd like to go for that ride. If Sally comes by, you, you tell her to stay away from here. going to say when the teacher from the Institute gets here. Same thing he said when I suggested it in the first place. And he doesn't want her here. Yeah. You know, Paul, maybe... Maybe you should have told him you sent for her anyhow. There's a couple up there. Not rain clouds, though. They're just the white, fluffy kind. Were you ever afraid of the dark when you were a kid? Yeah, a little, I guess. I wasn't. I kind of liked it. Some kind of quiet and warm about it. <laughs> you know, you know, my brother Hoss was afraid of the dark when he was little. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. yeah. My pa said he wouldn't go to bed without a candle burning in the room every night. <laughs> kind of funny, a guy that big being afraid of the dark and I wasn't. <laughs> I'm sure afraid of it now, though. Miss Dobbs. Yes, I'm Ellen Dobbs. Uh, are you Benjamin Cartwright? Yes, yes. Oh, good. Thank you, driver. I'll be all right now. A pleasure, ma'am. I'll, I'll take it back. Thank you. Won't you come in, please? Mr. 
Jobs. Uh, this is my son, Hoss. Hoss? How do you do? My goodness. You're a big man, aren't you, Hoss? Yes, and that's what folks tell me. And Joseph, he's not here, is he? Well, the Institute wrote that you preferred him not to be here when you arrived. Yes, that's correct. He'll be here this afternoon. Well, Mr. Dobbs, you've had a long journey. Would you uh, like to get settled into your room and so <laughs> catch your breath? Well, I would love a cup of coffee, if I may. The road was so dusty. Yes, of course. Hapsane. Hapsane. What you yell for now? Uh, coffee for three, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dobbs, why don't we sit down? Uh, it would be better if I take your arm, Mr. Cartwright. And if you would walk just a little ahead of me, please. What? Yes, thank you. You can just put my hand on the chair. Oh, yeah. I see. Well, my, this is certainly more comfortable than the seat on the stage. Uh, what exactly did the Institute write about me, Mr. Cartwright? That you're a fine teacher and a, a tough little lady. <laughs> Coming all the way from San Francisco, I know exactly what they mean. Thank you, Hopsing. Oh, may I pour, Mr. Cartwright? If you'll just hand me the cups, please. Thank you. I take it that uh, my not being able to see disturbs you. Well, I don't know if the word is disturbed. Oh, I think it'll do nicely. You see, we've learned at the Institute that some of the best teachers of the blind are other blind. Well, nevertheless, I want to be totally honest, Miss Dobbs. I can't believe that a teacher who is as... who is as sightless as he is will instill much faith. Well, you're probably right. But you see, I have no intention of telling Joseph that I'm blind. At least not for a while. In the beginning, he'll believe that... that I can teach, that I can do a job. Because I can see. When the time is right, I'll tell him I'm blind. I hope by then he'll realize that there is a place for blind people in this world. I don't see. No, Mr. Cartwright, I don't see. And that's where you're going to have to help me. How long will it be before Joseph returns? Well, a few hours. Oh, good. Because I'm going to need time to get used to this house. At least the areas where I'll come in contact with Joseph. To begin with, if you'll trace the shape of this room on the palm of my hand with your finger, It'll be easier for me to visualize it. You could start at the front door, where I first came in. Well, it's a pretty large area, actually. It's three rooms in one. Uh, the front door is, say, right here. I see. Now, you move along here, and you go to what's back of you, which is the dining room area. The kitchen is... There's someone coming. Yeah. 
Uh, Joseph? Uh, there's someone here I'd like you to meet. Hello, Joseph. This is Miss Dobbs. She's from the Institute, isn't she? Yes, I am. I told you I didn't want anybody here. Well, Joseph, I... I'm sorry you came all this way for nothing, but I... Uh... See, I talked to the doctor and he said I'm going to be f fine. I'm not going to be blind very long. So you'd uh, just be wasting your time here. But I'm a teacher, Joseph. I don't consider teaching a waste of time. I don't want you here. I I don't need you, and I don't want you, you here. Joseph, leave me alone! be gone by now. Well, I'm afraid that leaving here is as hard as getting here. The stages for San Francisco don't leave exactly every hour. But I'll be gone in the morning. Fine. Joseph, I, I'm terribly sorry that my coming here disturbed you. I had no idea that your condition was temporary when I took the job. Well, now you know. Yes, now I know. I was looking forward to this job. I haven't had a great deal of work lately. It's my father's fault, not mine. Oh, I'm not blaming you. It's just that... that I had hoped for a few weeks' work. I don't need you. Well, you can't blame me for trying, can you? Will I see you at dinner? Oh, I'll be seeing the, the dinner was just wonderful. <laughs> I even had seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Missy Dobb. You lucky Mr. Horse not here for dinner. You maybe not even have first. <laughs> 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 well, <clears throat> I think I better look in on Jamie. He has a tendency to daydream while he's doing his homework. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, I must oh. say. I'm, I'm sorry. The right hand. No. I I was just going to say, I I must say, I'm not looking forward to that trip tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's funny. I was, I was going to ask you how, how long it took to get to San Francisco. I stayed I've never gone that way. Well, all I can say is it's much too long. <laughs> Take your word for it. May I have some more coffee, please? Hmm? Here's my cup. Well, you have to tell me when to stop for it. Oh, well, wait just a minute, then. Would you like me to show you a simple way? Sure. All right. Put your fingers around the cup. And this top finger rests just inside the rim. You'll know when to stop. That's very good. You know when to stop, right? It's hot. <laughs> it's, it's simple. <laughs> there are other ways, too. You know that some people can do it just by listening? What, what, what do you mean, listening? Well, would you like to try it? Sure. All right. Hold your cup uh, by the handle. Now, as you pour you'll find that the sound begins to lower. 
When it's about three quarters full, it'll stop. You did it. <laughs> hey, never thought about listening to coffee before. <laughs> You got me listening to coffee. I think I, I sip it kind of loud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, uh, I, I don't like to see anybody uh, lose a job. I mean, like you said, when you came here, you didn't, you didn't know the circumstances. Well, it was wrong of me to come begging you for a job. Besides, you're right. You don't need me. It would be foolish for me to teach you a lot of things that you don't have to learn. Yeah, but we, I mean, we did hire you. I... Well, that was uh, before I knew the circumstances. Yeah, well, see, I don't, I don't know how long it'll be before I get my sight back. The, the, the doctor's not sure. Could, could be two days, it could be two months. I mean, I, I could probably learn a lot of things that would help me get along until I got my sight back. Well, um, are you sure you're not just saying this because you know I need work? Oh, no, no, I, I mean, I'm, I just sit around here. I, I don't have anything else to do. But it would be nice for me to stay here in the country. Oh, would you? Uh, yes, all right. I'll stay a little while. That's good. stays at a right angle at all times. That way you'll be protected. The right hand guides you. Back of the hand against the wall, that's right. Feels kind of funny. I know, but it works. Now, as you walk, keep your head up, shoulders back. Think of the center of your body. That's right. Yes. Now, you know this room very well, so you should have no difficulty. Now, you tell me everything you touch as you come to it. Oh, I feel now's the wall. Yes. Well, I get... That's the fireplace, I guess. Good, yes. Is there anything there above the fireplace? Oh, yeah, I can feel the picture. Good. That's fine. Head up, though, head up. Shoulders back, stand erect. Should have been a sergeant, Miss Dobbs. <laughs> now remember, the heel against the step and slide it straight down. Against the step, slide it straight down. Again. Heel against the steps. That's good. All right. Now you know where you are, don't you? First landing, right? All right. Put your heel against the step. Let it slide down. Good. Relax. Here we are. How was that? It's coming. Let's try it again. Yes, sir. comfortable that time. I was. It, it was easy. Good. Hey, I hit it. Hey, did I get a ringer? Oh, she came darn close. Hey, well, you watch me, Bob. I bet you get one this time. You got yourself a bet. All right. You wait and see. I never thought I'd ever hear him laugh again. <laughs> Miss Dobbs, you're a remarkable woman. He's completely changed since you got here. I don't know how to thank you.
at you. Well, the easy part is over now. There's a difficult time still ahead for Joseph. Well, he knows he can function. He knows he can do for himself. But he still hasn't admitted to himself that he may always be blind. Uh, that's a fact that he's going to have to face very soon now. Well, he's, he's adjusted very well so far, hasn't he? To playing the game, but not to facing reality. <clears throat> but then I guess some of us never really do. Well, you have. Hmm. Not completely. No, even after all these years. No, there's still that, that moment every once in a while when I... And I lie awake in the morning, wondering what it would be like to open my eyes and feel the light streaming in. No, I'm afraid the hardest part still lies ahead for your son. Well, how about a contest? Sure. You ask for it, you're gonna get it. See? I, I can't get this one. Feel the dots. Concentrate. Don't think of anything but your fingertips. Remember, somewhere inside, you must keep a stillness so that you can always concentrate. Now, let's try it again. G? Good. That's very good. Okay, Joe. <laughs> I don't know what good it do to learn all this Braille. It'd take me forever to learn to read anything. Oh, it takes time, but not forever. You that, Jamie? I could end up with the fastest fingers in the West, huh? <laughs> could be. <laughs> That's enough for now. Let's have some lunch, shall yeah. we? Sounds good to me. I'd like a, I'd like a big cheese sandwich. Would you like me to make it, Miss Dodge? Well, why don't we make it together? Okay. <laughs> Hey, and, and give me a big glass of milk with that, too, will you? Sure thing, Joe. Thanks. Hi, Joe. Sally? How you doing? I'm fine. I... I came by a couple of times, but you weren't here. No, well, I've been kind of busy. I was so worried when I heard about the accident. I... Yeah, well, they, they were kind of worried about my eyes for a while, but uh, the doc says I'm going to be fine. I'm, I'm seeing a lot better every day. In about a month, I'll be just like new. What have you been doing? Not working at the store, mostly. Hasn't been much business, though, since the down mine shut down. Well, they hit a new vein, things will be booming again. I brought you a get well present. It's the only thing I could think of. Thanks. Do you want me to unwrap it first? Do you want me to guess? You always said you liked strawberry jam. I thought that... I like it just fine. I... Why don't you go now? I've got a lot of things I have to do. Joe, I'm sorry. Look, you got to look at the blind man. What else do you want? Why don't you come here anyway? Ask, ask me to the dance Saturday night? How about a... How about a party? I'm great at parties. Blind man's bluff, pin the tail on the knocker, you name it. Look, get out of here, will you?
hard to understand. He was doing so well. <sighs> Paul, you don't reckon Sally Marsh might have something to do with it, huh? I saw her riding down on the south road this afternoon. Did you speak to her? No, I was up on Willow Crest, but she wouldn't have been down there unless she was visiting this place, would she? Was he very fond of that girl? Yes, I... Well, he's been going out with her for some time. I... Well, that's it, of course. Having her see him like this for the first time. You see, he felt safe with us, teacher and family. But a girl... Someone... You have that special feeling for. I know how painful it can be. You, uh, you think I ought to go up and... No, Mr. Cartwright, please don't do that. You're too close to him. I know how much he means to you, but please, you... You must let me try to think of a way to handle this. Thank you. Be careful for a whiskey, Miss Dove. Thank you, You're going to congratulate me for knowing it was you? Yes, that was very good. Of course it was good. I had a very good teacher. I'm supposed to listen and think and then do. You sure you don't want some whiskey? I'm sure. Don't you think you've had enough, Joseph? No, I haven't had nearly enough. I'm gonna get blind this time. <laughs> That's a joke. You can laugh at that. A blind man getting blind is very funny. You're very quiet. That's right. You're supposed to be quiet. So you can listen. That's what I did today. I had a... I had a caller today. A young lady calling me. Give me some jam and pity. Lots of pity. Well, she needn't have. You seem to have enough for yourself. Oh, Joseph. Do you think you're the only person in the world who's lost his sight? Close your eyes. Go on, Mr. Shut him tight. Shut him and tell me what you see. Now, what do you see? Nothing. Well, that's exactly what I have to look forward to the rest of my life. Nothing. Being blind doesn't give you special privileges. You've only lost one of your senses. You still have four left. Now learn to use them. I want to see! And if you don't, are you going to be waited on and dependent for the rest of your life? Wallowing in your, your self-pity? What do you, you know? Oh. I've taught ten-year-old boys with more guts than you have. They face their blindness, and they learn to, to make a life for themselves. I'm wasting my precious time here, Joseph. I lied to you. I don't need this job. I'm desperately needed at the Institute. There's so many blind people there who, who want to learn, who are eager to learn. There you go! Well, I will. And I pity you, Joseph. Not because you're blind, but because you haven't the, the courage to learn to live with it.
I'll see you in the morning, Joseph. Accident. <laughs> he, he had was a broken axle, and he had it fixed promptly. <laughs> How's that for quick reading, huh? Oh, it's remarkable. As good as they do at the Institute? In some cases, better. My, you've accomplished so much these last three weeks. I had a good teacher. Why don't you take tomorrow off and go for another nice ride with Jamie? Ah, I don't want him dragging me around the ranch anymore. Oh, He's... now we're going to start that, hmm? Telling yourself how worthless you are. No, I'm not going to start that again. It's... I wish there was something I could really do, you know? Well, it seems to me there are a lot of things around here you could learn to do. Well, not the things I want to do. I... And you see me busting Bronx or uh, herding cattle or anything like that. I mean, I want, to do, I want to do a job I can really do. You know what I mean. How would you feel about teaching? Hmm? Teaching at the Institute. There's so many there who need to learn exactly what you've learned. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? I'm blind. I'm... Well, Lewis Braille did it, and he was only a boy. Well, you think I could? Or... Yes. Oh, it would take a lot more work, a, a lot of study, but you have such a fine mind, Joseph. I know you could. Why don't you think about it? I will. I'll, I'll think about it. Hey, I'm, I'm going to get some sleep, I think. See you in the morning, huh? Good night. Good night. Dogs, you look kind of late. Yes, I am. But Joseph has gone up to his room. I, I hope that this might be a, a good time for us to have a talk. Oh, sure. I'm glad to see one of the young colts. Been doing rather badly. Doing better now. What? I'll be leaving in a few days, Mr. Cartwright. My work is finished here. Have you told Joseph yet? No, I... I haven't. He's, uh, he's grown very fond of you, you know. I feel the same about him. I know how much you love him. So what I'm going to say may be difficult for you to hear, but, but I know that you want the best for your son, Mr. Cartwright. Of course. Well, Joseph feels useless here. And he wants to work. He wants to make his own way. And above all, he wants to be needed. Yes, I can understand that. As a teacher at the Institute, he would certainly be needed. As a teacher? Yes. Well, he's hardly begun to learn himself yet. Well, it would take a while. But I think he'd make a fine teacher, Mr. Cartwright. And then, you know, 
once he gains his confidence, once he knows that he can do something worthwhile and necessary, then he might be ready to come back here and find a place for himself with you. Joseph say he wants to go? No, he... Well, he's not sure. He's still afraid, you know. But he needs to believe that he can teach. I think he will believe it when I tell him that I'm blind, too. I suppose San Francisco isn't so far away that we won't get up to visit. Night. Everything just like before. <laughs> well, the dad blamed doctor said you was gonna see you again anyhow, didn't he? You sure are a beautiful sight, I'll tell you that. I got I gotta tell Ellen. Tubbs, it's over. 
I can see. No more counting steps. No more being useless. Look at me. I can see. Oh, my dear. Oh, you can see. Oh, Joseph. Oh, thank God. Don't, my dear. It's all right. You can see that's what's important. I'm so sorry. Shh. I love you. I know you do. And I love you too, my dear. In a very special way. I didn't want... Joseph, cry out of joy for yourself, but not out of pity for me. I'm loved, and I'm needed, and I'm happy. Truly, I am. Fuss and bother don't mean a thing. <laughs> Do you always have to hunt them down like this? Well, no, most of them use a chicken house like respectable birds ought to. Come on, I'll show you. It's right over there. <laughs> you gonna raise chickens at your new place, Mrs. Christopher? Yes, of course I am. Provided somebody who knows about that sort of thing's around to advise me. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> it's settled. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It was a wolf. It was over by the water trough. We scared it, I guess. It got away. That's the first time in my life I've ever fainted. Oh, I fainted two or three times in my lifetime. Always at the sight of the doctor's bills. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank heaven you had presence of mind to protect your throat, Mrs. Christopher. But if it hadn't been for Jamie... <sighs> Tell me about my homecoming party, Ben. How many people have you invited? All of your old friends and... Some new ones, and uh, women will be in their finest finery, and the men will be in their tight collars and tight pants. <laughs> <laughs> and music? Oh, yes. The best in Nevada. I'll need a new dress for that. I'll, I'll need a new dress with long sleeves. There. <clears throat> Feeling steadier now? Yes. Steady as a rock, thank you. Do I have time to go shopping for that new dress? I still think you should get some rest. Oh, no, no. I'm fine. Truly, I well, am. Well, I think the doctor's right. You should. Ben, I'm fine. Well, I'll come along with you. No, no. Then the new dress won't be a surprise, will it? All right, Mrs. Christopher. But you had a bad shock, and I think you ought to lie down for a while. I'll just think beautiful thoughts and overcome it. Well, I'll, I'll see you later. All right. It's a bad wound, Ben. We'll just have to wait and see. How oh, Sam. Come along, see for yourself. Oh, 
Sam. He can't hear you, Ben. <laughs> Give me a hand, will you? Hold his arm out. Hold him tight now, Ben. Got him? that the dog that bit Sam had rabies. We don't know that the wolf does. The salivating could be from some kind of poison bait, strychnum, for instance. Well, there's got to be some way of finding out to be certain. The only way we can be certain is to ship the animal's body back to the medical laboratory in San Francisco. I will track that wolf down. Somehow we'll track him down and we'll send the carcass to the laboratory in San Francisco. I'll send a ranch hand along to make sure it doesn't go astray. Once it's there, how long before we get the report? A week. And if the worst... The worst comes to the worst. How long before the, uh, the symptoms begin to appear? Two weeks, a month. And there's no reason to say anything to April, one way or the other. All right? All right, Ben. Thank you. Ben! Look what I found. It has absolutely no use, except that it makes me happy. Yes, very beautiful. Oh, and you found yourself a dress. Oh, no, I don't want to find that too quickly. That'll spoil all the fun. I just want to see that one more shop over there. Oh, well, uh, don't be too long now. I really have to get back to the ranch. Here, I'll, I'll keep you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Being my friend. I won't be long. Looks like we picked up his track again. Fresh blood in the findings. Years. And new china, just for you. Oh, I'm saying. <laughs> new china, new dress, new shoes, new gloves. This summer, a new house and a whole new life. Oh, I have the plans if you'd like to look at them now. I think this would be a very good time. I wouldn't think of building them without you. 
left. Amy's volunteered for the chicken house. Mr. Cartwright, may I please be excused? Yes, of course. Oh, yeah. Had a few chores. Oh, I'll show him later. Huh? Hey. Well, Paul and I had these plans drawn up. When he died, I was going to burn them. I'm glad I didn't. I'm going to build it now for Laurie and me. Oh, what does Laurie think about it? Oh, she'll be joining me here as soon as school is out. Um, well, it's a fine-looking set of plans. Good-looking house. Mm -hmm. Do I have enough money? I think we should be able to fit into your budget. At April, if I'm going to ramrod this project, I've got to know where I'm going to build it. If you have time tomorrow, I'll show you the exact spot. Sure, of course, good. Is your arm hurting? Oh, a little. Uh, much as I hate to say it, I'm afraid I'll have to go get some rest. Mm. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. in San Francisco. It always seemed to be listening to its own past. I'm looking forward to a new house. I want to say my own words and give the future something of mine to listen to. Oh. What? We forgot to plan the party. The decorations, the buffet. We only have a few days. There's plenty of time for that tomorrow. Really? You know, it's like going back to the beginning. Not many people get that chance. You're a very special person. Am I? Very special. <laughs> what are you doing that out of None of you. Helping me decorate. He's cleaned the curtains and he's helped dust and I hope I didn't take him away from anything important. Oh, if I did. No, 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 ma'am. I just never did see him in an apron before, that's all. <laughs> me neither. Well, it wasn't my idea. Of course it wasn't. If you'll just put that bow up there, you'll be all finished, Jamie. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you're sure. Yes, I'm sure. I, uh, I hope I didn't spoil any of your plans, ma'am. No, as a matter of fact, you've just made my day. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see you later. Hey, what's that for? To stand on. Oh, if you look around the kitchen in there, you might find an apron that fits you. <laughs> oh. Well, Hoss, why don't you look around the barn? You might find an apron to fit you. You've been at this all morning. Why don't you ease up? Oh, no, you're not pulling a Jamie on me. I need your help with this. If you will help me... Oh, put the ladder down. Get up here, then I can... Place that on that nail. All right. Now, would you go over to that side and drape your end on the other nail? We need... Oh, shorten it up just a little bit, Ben. That's fine. How's that? That's good. Now, all you have to do is get the middle. Uh, thank you. How's this? 
Oh. Oh, Ben. What's the matter? wrong with me? Get him out. Doctor's gone to the jail to see a patient. You'd better wait inside here. Oh, Ben, what a lot of bother. You let the doctor decide what's bothering what isn't. Now, you get inside. Hold it, hold it. To, and it'll get worse. Sure looks bad. He, uh, he asked to be locked up, you know. He knew what was coming. Yeah. April's waiting in your office. Oh, has something happened? Well, she's come close to fainting at a time or two. Oh, let's take a look. Now, this might... Sting just a little bit. Hold on to that for a moment, please. What's wrong with it, Doctor? It doesn't seem to be getting any better. Well, there still is a little infection there, you know. Ben, I'd like you to see that April conserves her strength and gets more rest. April, why don't we just postpone the party until after... Oh, Ben, no, please. Oh, I don't think there's any need for that, Ben, considering the fact that I'm going to be there and all. But I don't want you to use that arm. But I have so much to do. Do as I say. And tomorrow night, I'll show you how to dance the Virginia City Reel. Dr. Phelps, I invented the Virginia City Reel. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Ben, I uh, want you to take something along with you. I'll be right with you. This is only sugar water. But from now on, I want you to keep a close watch on her. Notice whether or not she becomes extra thirsty or whether she has any difficulty in drinking water, whether she has an unusual reaction to the mere sight of water. There would be other reactions, too, probably. Hysteria, sudden anger. What if there are? Let's just hope there aren't. Doctor says a teaspoonful a day keeps the miseries away. I like the apple version better. Yeah. What was that? Uh, just a dog, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Hard to figure, ain't it? What's that? Tell a little Mary like that kicking her stall in splinters like this. Your pa's back. They went in the house. What'd he say? He said he'd be here in a minute. Come on. What'd the doctor say? Well, doing as well as can be expected at the moment. I hope he won't risk really a guess about the future. I don't guess we'll know anything for sure till we get that lab report, huh? That's right. And that's the problem. As if the report is bad, 
There's so many things she should be doing. You know, arranging her affairs, making plans for her daughter. Yeah. She's been happy as a metal lark. Wouldn't be right to change that unless we knew for sure, would it? Well, that was my thought. So let's not say anything until we have to. Oh, uh, Jamie. We're gonna need the buggy in the morning. Be real nice if it was cleaned up and polished. I was gonna do that. <laughs> Good. And to keep the top down. April likes the sunshine. Yes. where Paul and I were going to build our house. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, very beautiful. It hasn't changed. No. There's no sense of time here. Do you feel it? You said something to me once I'll never forget. You said the longest and the shortest distance between people is time. Hmm. Do you still believe that? Yes, I do. I'd like to believe that, too. But I'm going to die, aren't I, Ben? Don't even think that. You and Joe and Haas hide it well. But I see it in Jamie's face every time I look at him. The wolf was rabid, wasn't it? We don't know that. Don't we?
fact that she even touched water, used it like that, at least that's encouraging. Is it hopeful? I don't know, Ben. It's too soon. Where the devil is that report? As soon as it gets here, I'll let you know. Yeah. Sorry. I know, Ben. It's, uh, it's not easy to stand by, helpless, when... What about the party? We're going to have that party tonight, Doctor. And we'll make it the best party that April Christopher ever had. I say, Mrs. Christopher, you look lovely. Well, thank you, kind sir. And you, my friend, you've never looked more distinguished. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Grab your partner for the Virginia City Reel. I well, want you to go ahead and dance. No, sir. Dr. Phelps, you promised me a lesson in the Virginia City Reel. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Oh, me and my big mouth. Well, I guess I literally put my foot in it, didn't I? Show us, Doctor. There we go. Hey, we need four more couples. Come on. Hey, four more. One, two, three. Hello, uh... Mr. Cartwright. Having a good time, Jamie? Yes, nice party. Yeah, it sure is. Jamie, I haven't seen you dancing. No, sir, and you're not about to either. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Cartwright. Jamie, would you like to dance? Uh, no, thanks. That's. Oh, oh, right. Now all join hands in circles of and let a little sunshine in your love. There's a first old couple rip and start down that center and you cut them off short. Ladies go right and the gents go left. Now join your hands and circle to these. Circle eight and you get straight. For the first couple bow and the first couple swing. Now face the outside of the ring, sides fall in behind. She sure had a wonderful time. Yes. Now sashay down and form the line and sashay down and you do in fine. And you back the way. Head gents foot lady with a dose side dose. Head lady foot gents with a dose side dose. Well, you are absolutely marvelous. Oh, this woman can dance. <laughs> yes, I know. How she put up with your footwork, Doctor, I'll never understand. <laughs> A lovely party, isn't it? Oh, I think this is our dance band. Make tonight last forever. I will. Promise? Oh, yes, I promise. You know, it's funny. I, I've only been back three weeks, and it feels like I've never really been gone. It feels as if I belong here. Do you know what I mean? You do belong. It's a whole new, bright, shiny life. But down at the end of a very long corridor, I see a very small door. I want very desperately to go through that door. Mm. I think I need a drink. All this soberness is going to my head. You all right? Uh, yes. Uh. Dr. Phelps.
felt so strange. Strange? How? Well, sort of hollow and cold. And, and then the room started spinning. Mm. Well, you do still have a little fever. I feel much better now. How about the arm? Has there been any pain? That's odd. I haven't thought about that all evening. Well, that's something, isn't it? I'm terribly thirsty, though. I'll get you a glass of water. Thank you. Fine time for me to start acting like a woman. <laughs> I don't think your acting like a woman is going to come as any surprise to Ben. Am I that obvious? Well, let's say your feelings for Ben are not so obvious as the depth of a well or the width of a church door, but they'll do. <laughs> Quoting Shakespeare again, badly. Thank you. Mm. That's good. I'm sorry I spoiled your party, Ben. Oh, you didn't spoil it. You made it a success. Uh, Doctor, I think that's your buggy. Yes, well, I guess I know when I'm not wanted. <laughs> now, you get some rest. Good night. Good night, and thank you. Good night, Ben. Good night. Mr. Cartwright. Have I changed that much? I'm Laurie. Laurie Christopher. Laurie. <laughs> Laurie. What on earth? Surprise, Mother. Yes, I am. Dr. Phelps. This is my daughter, Laurie. How do you do? Hello, Laurie. I thought you had two more weeks of school. The dumbbells do. They're not your daughter. <laughs> Hi, hello. Oh, Laurie. My, 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 my. Look who's all grown up. Oh, have I? Yeah. I miss the big deals, though. Hmm, you would. <laughs> yeah. I'll take your leg, Jim. Thank you. Um, I'll give Laurie the room next to you, Paul. Uh, so yeah. I've got so much to tell you. I don't know where to begin. Oh, sounds very exciting. I got a message for you, Doc. That fellow back in jail is getting worse, and the deputy, he don't know what to do. Oh. Ben. Why don't you begin at the beginning? It's, it's Sam. He's taking a turn for the worse, so I'm going back to town. I'll come with you. No, no, I'll come with you. Excuse me, Dr. Phelps is going into town. Something's come up, and I'll go with him. I'll be back a little later and hustle look after things. Thank you, Ben. It's marvelous seeing you. Thank you. Oh, another real reason I'm here. Charles and I are going to get married. Right away. Right away? Oh, he has a, a wonderful position in Boston with a shipping firm. And we want to get married right away because, well, it'll be two years before he can come back. Oh, two years, Mother. We don't want to wait that long. <laughs> I see. Oh, I knew you'd understand. I'm so happy. Oh, golly, and there's so much to do. We've got to make my dress and, and send out invitations and uh, everything. Yes. I've had a very long day. Why don't we go upstairs and talk about that? Hold him. Hold him down. Oh, I'm trying. Let me get in there. Oh. Watch this. Oh. 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 On his back. There we go. Get a clear crack at Has it taken effect already? No, Ben. He's asphyxiating.
they all end that way. All the ones I've seen. The actual cause of death may be asphyxiation, as in Sam's case, but sometimes the bodily functions just give up. April. I'm afraid, Ben. Everything that's happened increases the probability. We can't wait any longer. She must be told. She knows. But at the party, she went. She knows. She's known for a couple of days now. It is a beautiful morning. Yes, it is. How Singh remembered me. Thank you. Let me fix your breakfast tray. I was coming down. I know. That's why I fixed the tray. Men are very nice, Charles especially, but sometimes they get in the way. <laughs> Time for woman talk. Oh, talk and plans and... Oh, I want you to be as happy about my marriage as I am. But you're not. As long as you uh, brought the coffee, why don't you pour it? I'm very happy about your marriage. Of all the young men who have ever come courting, Charles would be my choice for you. Well, I won't tell him you said that. He's vain as a peacock. <laughs> I doubt that. Have you set the date? No, that's why I'm here. Charles has to leave for Boston the first of next month, and he can delay that for a week or ten days, but that still doesn't give us very much time. The sooner the better. The reason I'm very happy is I know you'll always be loved and protected, as I was by your father. You sound as if you're going away or something. I am. But before I go, I want you to do something for me. Anything? But I don't understand. I want you to go back to San Francisco today. I want you and Charles to be married. Without you? I want you to stop back here on your way east. There'll still be time. Lori, listen to me. Do you remember when your father died? We were together when he died. How it helped the three of us to be together. This time, when I go, I want you to be by your husband's side. That's the way it should be. Oh, I don't believe it. It's true. I'm going to die. The verdict isn't in, but I know. In every way possible, I know. Oh, I want to be with you. Oh, my dear. You'll be with me when it counts. Oh. I just wanted to let you know that Joe's taking Laurie into town to catch the noon stage. <laughs> What's this about? 
I'm defending my honor, of course. Well? I, I didn't know you were such a brazen woman. <laughs> now that that's... Oh, 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 Ben! Oh, I'm so thirsty. A glass of water, please. Okay. I did the right thing with Laurie, didn't I? Yes. Yes, yes, you did. Uh, why? Why me? Why now? If I could make it me instead, I would. You've done so much to make me happy. Woman's vanity. I thought you were in love with me. Oh, April. Don't. Don't say anything. Compassion, when it comes, is the greatest form of love. I'm very grateful. One telegram, two faces of despair. The wolf was rabbit. One question, where do I go? I can't stay here. Virginia City Hospital. I've made the arrangements. I'll be a few minutes. I'll go with you. No, Ben. I've read and heard enough to know that I don't want you there. I know. But no power on earth can keep me from being there with you.
you notice what a beautiful morning it was? Remember that. Don't let that change. Take good care of my chickens. Trying to get the grass, don't it? Yeah. Gotta find a lot more than tracks, though. Yeah. This is polar bear country. Don't seem like even one of them Montana steers could live up here, does it? Yeah, you better keep hoping he does. Well, I'm hoping, all right. I'm hoping. One little yearling steer don't seem like he'd be that important, does it? <laughs> I don't know how he gets around. I sure can't. Well, he ain't got to wear these blooming things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I had Mr. Griggs ride out with me, so you'd know the truth. It's not pleasant, but we have to face facts. Tyson, you lost half your herd to winter kill. Gorley, I figure your loss is close to 60%. You men sign these quit claim deeds, and you get paid cash right now. by the bank to see you. Can't see you told me I'd find you out here. This is a business meeting. Oh, yes, I'm sure it is, Mr. Corey. What do you offer you? Three dollars an acre. Three dollars an acre. You approve of this, Paul? Cartwright, you're sticking your nose into something that doesn't concern you. Oh, it does concern me, Mr. Corey. The winter kill wiped out more than half the cattle on the East Slope ranches, including the Ponderosa, so it concerns me very much. It takes money to restock, and money we don't have. Yes, it does take money, Ed. But that's what banks are for. I just told Mr. Tyson and Mr. Gorley we're overextended. The almanac says the next one is going to be even worse than this one. A livestock loan now would be throwing good money after bad. Paul, Mr. Tyson, Mr. Gorley, and most of the ranchers around here have been your customers for a long time. You made some pretty handsome profits during the good times. Now that times are bad, are you going to sell us down the river? Ben, the bank can't stand another winter kill. We won't have to. Because we're going to breed cattle that'll survive the worst of our winters. There ain't no such animal. Oh, yes, there is, Mr. Corey. In Montana. Now, they have winters that are far worse than anything we have around here. And they breed cattle that pull through any kind of weather. Survival rate, 90% or better. 90%? That's right. I was in Montana last fall, and I brought back a steer yearling and put him up in Sawtooth just to see how he'd make out. I went back up there three weeks ago to check on him. That little steer was just as tough and hardy as can be and foraging for himself. I don't believe any of this. There's a Grange meeting three weeks from today. My offer's open till then. Coming, Griggs. Gentlemen. Up there. Sure looks fat and sassy to me. <laughs> yeah. Let's go.
But, you know, it's a community effort. Uh, Cattlemen Association will have to handle everything, so I guess you'll be doing the buying. Oh, now, oh, wait a minute, Ben. I, I have to tell you, I lived in Montana. Uh, what do you have? All right, be fun. Be useful. You know, I, I went through a winter in Cutbank, coldest place in the country. That's cold. Mm -hmm. When spring came, most ranchers had more cow hands than cattle. Well, there's no reason to believe that Montana's stock would uh, be any better down here. Well, this is a new breed of stock, though, you see. Grazed in Bitterroot Valley. That's a cross between the oxen which pulled the wagons in from Missouri and the cattle driven in from Oregon. Well, if you've got a steer that can live through a whole winter on Sawtooth, I might believe that. I think we need that one. <laughs> hey, Paul. Well, we're in luck. He's still up there, that tough son of a gun. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen him in my own eyes. He's frisker than he was when we brought him up in September. Absolutely. What did he measure? There's no way to get a measure of him. We couldn't catch him. We was on snowshoes. He wasn't. He mowed his belly deep sometimes. He's still a whole lot friskier than we were. He's not hurt now, I guarantee you. Yeah, he's in great shape. What'd I tell you? A new breed. Well, this can mean the saving of a lot of ranches. Yeah. Yes, including ours. Uh, a couple of whiskeys. i tell you what, Frank. Let's go tell Gordy and Tyson and Griggs about this steer here. Uh -huh. And don't wait till... No, no. Right. I can see their face when you tell them. <laughs> we'll see you later, Paul. Mm. Ah, ha! Good. One thing I like about winter, no matter how cold it gets outside, you can always stay warm inside. Well, if we can get the cattle to drink this, they stay alive in Alaska. <laughs> Say, ain't you fellas going over to the Grange Hall? What for? What for? For the draw. What draw? Three weeks from today. It's going to be the first Grange dinner since freeze up last fall. <laughs> it's going to be a real barn buster. Why, the boys are over there right now cutting the cards to see who's going to supply the beef. You know, we ought to get over there. Somebody ought to represent the Ponderosa. Hey, Joe, I ain't even thought out yet. We ain't thought on the way. As cold as it is out there, it ain't going to be easy. Yeah, you got plenty of insulation. Come on, let's go. Yeah, burn it. Now, come on, will you? Yes, sir. Ah! Thank you. Nine of spades for the Silver Leaf Ranch. Thank you, low man. Uh, hold it, hold it. This ain't official yet till the Ponderosa had a chance to cut. Hey. Oh, Hoss, Joe, you're just hey, in time. Hello, Joe, Give us a fresh cut on them cards, Mr. Griggs. All right. Howdy. Hello, Hoss. How Hoss. are you? Long time no see. Fine, thank you. Landis, I heard to see you at the Christmas party. So did I. Well, we had a lot of snow out our way, Hoss. We had to wait till the road was plowed. Uh, oh, I've had a good-looking wife like that. I wouldn't mind being snowbound for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Low card supplies the beef. Nine of spades is low right now. Well, yeah. you want to cut them, Joe, or you want me to? No, you do it. You're lucky. All right. Six of diamonds, low card. Looks like we'll be eating Ponderosa beef. Well, you'll be eating the best in the world, boys. Take it from the man that just ate one. Yeah, it's pretty obvious, ain't it? <laughs> well, I guess that about does it. Everyone who belongs to the Grange is cut, except Mr. Quarry. Well, Mr. Quarry's a very busy man. <clears throat> How are you? You're the new foreman for Mr. Quarry's Lucky Tea Ranch. Why don't you cut for him? <laughs> well, uh, Howie will be glad to. Uh, well, that was just kind of a little joke, ma'am. Not a very good one. Well, uh, Howie can cut for Mr. Quarry. I mean, after all, the Rocker Tea is Mr. Quarry's uh, largest ranch, and uh, Howie is the foreman. Well, like I said, ma'am, it's just a kind of a joke. Oh, Howie? Give me the cards, Mr. Griggs. Four of spades, low card. Rocker T supplies the beef. Rocker T will be delighted. Come on, honey, let's buy you that coat. Uh, well, see you at the party. It's not her fault she didn't know any better. Yeah, but Corey's gonna scream like a scalded cat. Hey. Maybe we could loan old Howie a steer, huh? How are you gonna offer it to him? He's too proud. I don't feel like you're putting him down in front of his wife. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Take it easy, Mr. Griggs. Yeah, so long. Well, that's pretty. <laughs> it's just what I always wanted. Well, it's just the beginning of what you deserve. Living through a winter snowbound with the likes of me. Um, the, uh, coat costs more than I thought. That's all right. Four dollars more. I, I, I can take it back. No. It was my idea. I told you to buy it. You're sweet. 
I do want to look nice at the party. Yeah, that party. I'm sorry. It was my fault. I... I shouldn't have said anything. It would have helped. Well, I had to say something. I mean, the, the men at the Grange were laughing at you. Oh, wait a minute. They were laughing at Jake Quarry. Now, he's never there to see who supplies the beef, but he's the first man at the table when they start eating it. He will donate the steer, won't he? I doubt it. Oh, well, we can't afford that. I'll take the coat back. No. You wear it to the party. I am sorry. Howie, maybe you're wrong. I, I mean, the least you can do is ask him. I'll do that right now. Honest! Mr. Corey? Heard you in town. All we had to come in, we're out of just about everything. I wanted to ask, uh... Ask me to the Grange dinner? That's big of you. I hear you're supplying the beef. Well, I thought Rocker T would. Did I say that? No, but the other ranchers give... Giving what they can't afford. That's why the other ranchers are in trouble. You're a long way from the Rocker T. You've got a lot of work to do out there. Landis, a lot of men are out of work. If I find one steer missing from the tally sheet, you're going to be out of work, too. What are we going to do? I don't know. I guess I'll have to go up on the hill and find some meat. We're in trouble. All of us. I visited every East Slope ranch. They're all of the same things. Cattle turn their backs to the wind. They're driven up against the fences. They pile up there and they freeze to death. Well, oh, Montana steer is going to save us, huh? Yes. Yes, I think so. But we're going to have to convince Griggs and the other bankers before they'll lend us the money to buy the herd. That isn't going to be easy. Well, why not? Well, Griggs is doubtful. So are the other bankers. You two didn't get close enough to that yearling to uh, take his measure. Griggs is afraid that he's skin and bones and is ready to keel over. You know, let him try throwing a loop on that steer. I think he roped a full-grown buffalo. <laughs> well, Griggs is a banker, he's not a cattleman. But he is willing to look at the animal. Once you two bring him down. I, Paul, we're feeding tomorrow. We're going to need all the hands we got. I can help. You've got to go to school, young fella. Day after tomorrow he comes down, huh? Jamie, you got work to do. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. All the way up on Sawtooth, and that's snowing ice again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never thought I wish I was back in school. Yeah, lucky kid. <laughs> Thank you.
plenty of steer tracks, but no fresh one, huh? How can you tell they ain't fresh? Well, the snow on the inside of the tracks all melted. Uh-huh. Take a look at our tracks. They're just a couple of minutes old, and they're all melted. I hate to say it, but you're right. Yeah. There's some more over yonder, but like you say, they ain't fresh neither. Yo, how do you tell when they're fresh? Well, you see, little brother, you can always tell when steer tracks are fresh when the steer's still standing in them. <laughs> Those are fresh tracks. <clears throat> beginning to worry. You've been gone so long. Nothing to worry about. Oh, you found an elk. Oh, that's wonderful. Now we won't have to explain why, why we couldn't supply the beef for the Grange dinner. You look hungry. I'll go start supper. Dark. Yeah, we better make camp, huh? We're not yeah. gonna see anything this late. No, it's gonna get cold in a minute, anyhow. What do you mean in a minute? I'm freezing now. Let's get these yeah. bad ones in the Move up here behind these rocks. Get out of the wind, huh? Thanks. Howie? Howie, what's wrong? Found an elk. I, I think you'd be happy. Unless you're still mad at me. I found a steer. Elk steer? Same difference. It's all good meat. Not exactly. An elk's wild belongs to the man that finds it. But a steer, that's property. Belongs to somebody. Where's the owner's brand? And that's what you found? A branded steer? And shot and brought home. Man ought to be sure before he shoots. Up there in the snow, 20 miles from here, any branded cattle ought to be. Pine tree brand, Ben Cartwright steer. It's my fault. I didn't have to cut the cards. There ain't a cow hand alive that don't know any better than to shoot first and then look. Don't you think Mr. Cartwright will understand? I hope so. Finish the chores tomorrow. I'm going to ride over and tell him. I'll give him this. That'll pay for the steer. It's been in your family for a long time. My granddad, my pa, me. Well, maybe Mr. Cartwright will hang on to it. Let me buy it back. Hey, Hoss. You, uh, you awake? No. Are you thinking about getting awake? Mm-hmm. Good. It's your turn to start that fire. I was thinking about it come spring thaw. Now, come on, we got that yearling to find. I tell you what, I'll, I'll flip you for it. Okay, heads. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> say you want to find out what your foreman's up to, drop in on him unexpectedly. Looks like you didn't listen. Looks like you helped yourself to one of my steers anyway. It ain't one of yours, Mr. Corey. Pine tree. Looks like I've got a rustler on my payroll. It was an accident. I was hunting elk. I saw the steer. I thought it was a maverick. Where? Sawtooth. That's miles from any other Ponderosa stock. You shot yourself a branded steer. That's rustling. 
pure and simple. Members of the Cattlemen's Association all agreed before they joined to prosecute all rustlers, no exceptions. Cartwright may be a friend of yours, but I won't help you. You're going to have to stand trial. Another thing, Cartwright values this steer more than any animal he ever owned. You couldn't have got yourself in more trouble if you shot one of his sons. Of course, wrestling one beef or a whole herd, same thing. Five years prison terms, the least you can get. Unless you run to a mean judge, then you might get 16 years. Anyone see up there on Sawtooth or the way back? No, nobody. You and I are the only ones who know about it? My wife knows. I told her. Well, you can keep her quiet. You do something for me, and I'll forget I ever saw this steer. Come on. It's no big chore. Just ride over the Cartwrights and tell him you saw his steer up in Sawtooth, uh, down and dying, winter kill. I'll tell him all right, but I ain't gonna lie. You'll do what I tell you, or I'll talk to the sheriff. And you'll spend a lot of years away from home. Do you love your wife? I doubt she'll be here when you get out. Seems to me there's more to this than just one lie. I'm just trying to help you. No. Somehow you're trying to make money out of all this. But well, it won't matter anyway. If they value that steer the way you told me they do, they'll go looking for it. Not till next spring. Don't you worry about it. I'll worry if they don't find it. Now, just don't you worry about it. You, uh, do as I say and, uh, ride over there and say your piece. Or go to prison? And lose your wife. If you go now, you could be back by dark. You look far, far away. He caught me. Well, whatever it was, you look happy. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me about it. I could use a happy thought. <laughs> you have so many worries of your own. I'll tell you some other time. Well, I do have a problem or two. I can guess what it is. You're happy because winter's just about over. <laughs> I certainly am. You know, I, I'm not used to not having a lot of people around me. You know, I... My big family. <laughs> Howie. You know, I, I wouldn't have been able to have made it without you. Sure you could have. Mm -mm. I don't have your courage. Well, there are a lot of people who are snowed in all winter all alone. I'm afraid I, I wouldn't be able to make it. But next winter, it'll be better. Maybe. Should be easier next winter. You've been through one. Oh, I don't mean that. I won't be alone next winter. There'll be three of us. Are you sure? Absolutely. Oh. I didn't want to tell you, I'll but I... I'll drive you to the doctor tomorrow. No. I feel fine. I, well, I get a little queasy in the morning, but that's natural. You are pleased, aren't you? Of course I'm pleased. Glad you told me now. Kind of makes things clearer for me. I'll be back before dark. Are you going to the cart rides? Yeah. Are you going to take the watch? Sure. Thanks for reminding me. I was up on Sawtooth hunting elk, and I saw one of your steers, Mr. Cartwright. It's in a pretty bad way. So then the bones were about to poke through the hide. It fell while I was watching and couldn't get up. It looked to me like he was winter killed. You sure he was dead? I'm sure. I've seen too much of it this winter to be wrong. Well, I was just riding by. I thought you'd like to know. Yeah. Well. No use us waiting around for Hoss and Joe. Turns out your Montana breed was not as hardy as you hoped. It's a shame. If that steer had survived, we might have seen our way clear to loan you money to buy Montana stock. As it is, 
be a waste. Hey, we couldn't find that yearling. No, I didn't think you would. How come? Well, Howie came by soon after you'd left and told me he'd been up there and he'd seen the steer die. Die of what? The winter kill. Oh, well, I find that pretty hard to believe. Uh, that steer we saw up there four days ago sure wasn't suffering no hunger pangs. If he lasted the whole winter, that last storm wasn't gonna hurt him any. I know, I know, I know, I know. Howie's a good friend, but I... Still can't figure out why he'd spend a whole day in the saddle just to tell us that he'd seen one of our dead steers. Did he know how important that steer was to us? Well, Jake Quarry knows, and how he works for him. Well, then how he knows. I think he's lying. I don't think he ever saw that steer die from winter kill. Well, we're just guessing. That really isn't fair. Let's ride up there tomorrow morning. And this time we'll look for a winter killed steer, not one that's up and running. Why don't you fellas get cleaned up? It's getting pretty deep up here. Let's tell them with that clump of trees down there. Deep. Yeah. Last time we saw him, Paul, that steer was right up there among them rocks, making like a mountain goat. And he outran you, huh? Some. Of course, he had one advantage. He didn't have on none of these dang snowshoes. Yeah, he was just playing games with us. Ran circles around us a couple of times. Well, sure doesn't sound like a weak and starving animal to me. Well, he wasn't. He still has not that day. He was as healthy as Big Brother there. Yeah. How he said the last time he saw that yelling, he'd fallen down among the rocks up in the meadow. And I still say how he's lying. Well, he should be easy enough to find, eh? But one meadow up there. All right, that's where we'll look. Once we get up there, we'll split. We'll be able to cover three times as much ground that way. I've got an axe in my saddlebag. We'll need some poles to put the drifts. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> Tell you one thing, there's no winter kill steer up there. I think I'd like to talk to Howie again. Stop by. I didn't expect you over this way. Well, we were just up on Sawtooth. Look at that yearling of ours. Couldn't find a trace of him. Well, there's a big flat up there. Rocks and trees at the north end makes kind of a meadow. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's where we were. That's where I saw him. Fell against the rocks. Well, we searched that whole area. Well, he must be under a drift. Ah, uh, we poked around every drift on that mountainside. He ain't up there. Well, I could have sworn he was down for good. He must have got up and moved. The shape you said he was in. He couldn't move very far, could he? We didn't find him. I told you what I saw. I didn't hang around to watch your steer die. Howie, just you, Prince, up there, and ours. Nobody else's. Now, last you was a friend. All you saw 
was our dying steer. That's all. I swear it. Why don't you come in and get warm? Have a bite to eat before you go. Another time, Howie. Let's move on, Hoss. between you and the Cartwrights. Well, it seems the Cattlemen's Association members made some sort of an agreement to prosecute rustlers, and I might be prosecuted. Well, you're not a rustler. I know that, and the Cartwrights know it. I don't know, it's something legal. It all started when you cut those cars. It's my fault. I wanted everyone to know that you were the foreman of the Rocker T. Because I'm proud of you. Proud of me? Why? Take me all day to tell you that. Just seems like lately we've been so far apart. Well, I've had other things on my mind. I know you're in trouble. But as long as we face it together, good, bad, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. As long as we have each other. Even if I go to jail for rustling? You're not going to go to jail. I'll tell the judge. And if he doesn't believe me, I'll scratch his eyes out. Fire and brimstone. You talk a good fight, but you couldn't hurt anybody. Neither could you. Well, the fix I'm in, no matter what I do, we're both going to be hurt. Howie, I love you. And no matter what happens, I always will. Sorry, I didn't miss anything. Where is that at again? You gentlemen are in for a treat. Rocker tea beef, donated by Jake Corey. It's the best. You'll see. <laughs> Evening, ladies. Nevada's best beef coming up. Donated by Jake Corey. Excuse me. He sure is a busy man, isn't he? Put a saddle on him, he'd make a great cutting horse. He's already cornered Tyson, now he's working on Gorley. Soup's on, folks. Ed, can I uh, talk to you a minute before you sit down? You sign that quick claim deed tonight, and I'll give you the cash. I got it on me. Price is still $3 an acre? That's right. It's still more than you get from anybody else. I got the deed on me. I'll have to think on it, Mr. Quarry. I hear your Montana steer didn't make it. So I hear. That's too bad. Griggs, does that mean the bank loan won't go through on the Montana herd? Don't talk business. It's social gatherings, Mr. Quarry. Don't blame you. Rocker tea. Fine beef, if I do say so myself. Tea beef. It's Cartwright beef, Montana beef. That's a lie. You wouldn't donate, Quarry. You almost fired me when I asked you to. Well, you're fired now. Montana beef. I shot it. Landis, you keep your mouth shut. Hold it, Quarry. Go ahead, Howie. You've been hearing how the Cartwright yearling was winter killed. It just ain't so. I shot it in four feet of snow up on Sawtooth, thinking it was a maverick. I had to chase it for an hour to get it in my sights. That's a lie. It's the truth. I suppose you were there. 
No, I wasn't there. But I was in the yard when Howie brought the steer back down from the mountain. One of them lies and the other swears to it. They're in on this with Cartwright. They're trying to get that bank loan so they can get that Montana herd. That stock ain't as good as what we breed right here. Now, I don't care what Landis says. This, this is rock or beef. I can prove I shot that steer up on Sawtooth. I can show you where I dressed it out. All right, I will take you up on that. We'll ride up with you first thing in the morning. You'll need witnesses. I'll be there. I don't like horseback riding in the snow, but I'll be there. I think I may eat this now. <laughs> Get into these shoes, but as far as we able to get on the horses. So far, I could do without, I think. Yeah. Your privilege. It's government property. Everybody ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. No shoes could be so tricky. I spent half my time falling down and getting up. Well, it'll take you a little while to get used to them. <laughs> I think this is my first and last attempt. All right. How much further do we have to go? All three, maybe four miles. You cover the whole ridge looking for help? No, sir. I came up the south slope. It's near the Rocker T. Time I got the tops when I saw the steer. Landis, you want us to really believe you shot a steer in country like this? I shot it and you know it. Cartwright. You off from a job? No, I didn't even know I needed one to last night. He's hoping you will. 
He's hoping you'll hire him on to help bring that Montana herd down. That's why I made up the story about the steer. It's true. Oh, yeah. He's gonna walk our legs off till we can't move. There won't be nothing there, because there's nothing to find. There is. You swear to that? Yeah, I swear. All right, raise your right hand and swear. I swear. Denman, the man's a rustler. Arrest him. Well, not uh, quite yet, Mr. Corey. <laughs> Landis, you can't even lie yourself into jail. <laughs> Hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it, Howie. Howie, Howie. Hold it, hold it. Hold it now. Come on, Howie. Finding that steer's the important thing. The fellas are gonna need all your energy for walking around these hills. Screw it. Howie, you just prove <coughs> you shot that steer, then you'll be helping all of us. And I promise you there'll be no prosecution. I'm ready to go whenever you are. All right, let's go right now, huh? Come on. said pine tree. There's your Montana steer. I guess that shows you who's right, Mr. Griggs. No, I shot that Montana steer. I'll show you where I dressed it out. Sure, you can show us where you dressed it out. Show us some uh, blood, huh? How do we know it isn't from a deer or an elk? Well, let's take a look at the brand. Looks a little wide and thick, don't it? Yeah, look at that little hump. That was never in our brand. Yeah, it looks like a running iron has been used on that. All right. You trying to get out from under? If the brand's in question, there must be some way to prove who's right. There is. I'll skim that brand off. And if it's an honest and original brand, then on the bottom side of the hide, it'll all be the same color. And if it isn't, the change will show up. Well, if a running iron's been used, it'll be admissible as evidence in court. Down there, all right? brought the steer up here. That's all I'm going to say. If I were in your place, I wouldn't talk either. Attempted murder using a running iron. Denman, it's 
your responsibility to get me to a doctor. Oh, we'll get you there. Shames me that I lied to you about that steer. That boy threatened to send you to jail if he didn't lie. That's what he said. Threats and duress wouldn't stand up in court. Howie, everything will be all right. You're a good foreman. And there are plenty of places around here for a good foreman. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Maria will be happy to know that you think that way. You be sure and tell her I said so. I will. Joseph, if we took the south slope, we could get Howie home two or three hours sooner, couldn't we? Darn right. Then he could see his wife two or three hours sooner. That's all right with me. Well, let's get the bill with that, man. <laughs> trở lại với channel hướng dẫn tô màu của mình và hôm nay thì chúng mình hãy cùng nhau tô màu một quả lựu và một miếng lựu như thế này nhé ừ. quả lựu hơi bị khó nếu mà vượt cái chị ăn chè ấy, ừ. thì phải có chè hạt liệu đúng không? người ta làm cái gì nhỉ? mà mà nó ít hơn như hạt liệu ấy. thực ra là thường thường cái này nó làm công nghiệp. Chứ... có máy đúng không? Ừ, chứ còn chị em bảo cái hạt liệu mới khó làm sao nó chuyển màu như thế đúng không chị ăn thì có thấy nó chuyển màu đúng không như thả liệu thật đấy không phần trên thì nó trắng ngả và ngả y hệt hạt liệu luôn ừ. đấy thế em mới bảo là khó chị ăn thì không bao giờ thắc mắc à chủ quán thì nó chỉ, chỉ mua uh, mua sẵn, sẵn về rồi. xong rồi luộc ừ. Nhưng mà nó cũng, nó, bọn, bọn nó làm thì thường nó biết là cái đồ đấy kiểu nó cũng phải hỏi là đồ nó làm như nào ấy Thường khách người ta cũng hay thắc mắc mà Khách người ta cũng kiểu hay hỏi ấy Ê, em chưa bao giờ hỏi Ê, thắc mắc chưa ừ. Cũng chưa sớm Mẹ em hỏi, bình thường này Giờ trước bọn chị ra đi đến thống mấy quán chè ở chỗ có một quán chè Tại lúc nhớ lúc quên ấy Ừ Thế là xong mới hỏi là chị ơi Thế rồi có cả gì chè dừa dầm tốt nốt hay cái gì Tại vì chị ra ngoài hội chị ăn cái quả tốt nốt ấy ừ. Thế xong rồi tốt Cái quả tốt nốt này là, là như nào đó chị 
có nghĩa là em lúc nhớ lúc quên là em chả hỏi nhiều lúc đi trên đường em định về xem xuất xem cái này cái kia em lại quên Mình đã vừa tô xong một quả lựu Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi hết video hướng dẫn tô màu của mình Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại mọi người